Hi, I'm Father Ken Metz. I'm a retired priest at All Souls Catholic Church in Sanford, Florida. And this is part of a series on Lenten practices and observances. Today's topic is Ash Wednesday. Now you're saying, why are you going to spend some time talking about Ash Wednesday? We all know that is the most popular day. More people go to church on Ash Wednesday than almost any other day in the year. Somebody once said that's because they get something. I'm not sure if that's really true. But it's the kickoff to Lent. Fasting and abstinence and doing penance has always been part of the scriptural tradition. And part of that tradition was the use of ashes. If you go back to the book of Esther, Mordecai, her foster father, he had saved her and had gotten the way that Esther would be part of the king's court. And then through a lot of shenanigans, the king issued an edict that all the Jewish people should be killed. Mordecai then sought the Lord's help, and he put on sackcloth and ashes. Job, in the book of Job, put on sackcloth and ashes. Daniel, he said, I turned to the Lord God, pleading in earnest prayer with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. In the book of Jonah, the famous story, after he was thrown out of the fish onto the shoreline, he got the message and said, he's a reluctant prophet, by the way, he was sent there to go to the people of Nineveh and say, it's time for you to repent, it's time for you to change. And the people put on sackcloth and ashes. Even the king put on sackcloth and ashes, and the city was spared. In Matthew, Jesus said, if the miracles worked in you had taken place in Tyre and Sidon, they would have reformed in sackcloth and ashes long ago. So scripturally, the sackcloth and ashes seems to reverberate down through the centuries, always as a sign of death and of mortification and of seeing those things inside of us that cause death in our own hearts, our own sinfulness. And the early church used this very, very often. In his book, De Penitentia, Tertullian prescribed that the penitent was, quote, live without joy in the roughness of sackcloth and the squalor of ashes. Time and time again, in our early history, we hear about people repenting and putting sackcloth and ashes on. In the Middle Ages, there were a few other things that I find really different. I don't know if I'd want to do these things, but those who were about to die were laid on the ground on top of sackcloth sprinkled with ashes. The priest would bless the dying person with holy water, and he would say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And after the sprinkling, the priest asked, are you content with sackcloth and ashes and testimony of your penance before the Lord in the day of judgment? To which the dying person responded, I am content. In all these examples, the event, symbolism of mourning, mortality, and penance is very, very clear. Eventually, the use of ashes became part of the liturgical rites for the beginning of Lent. We can find the ritual for the Day of Ashes is found in the earliest editions of the Gregorian Sacramentary, which was the official use in the church. In about the year 1000, a man preached, we read in the books of both the Old and the New Testament that the men who repented of their sins bestowed, bestrewed themselves with ashes and clothed their bodies with sackcloth. Now let us do a little at the beginning of our Lent that we strew ashes upon our heads to signify that we ought to repent of our sins during the Lenten fast. And so since the Middle Ages, we have done this at the beginning of every Lent season. Now it's been done in different ways. I think kind of the typical one that you and I would experience here in the United States is 
putting the ashes and making a sign of the cross on the person's forehead. But in some other countries, what they do is they take the ashes out of a bowl and they sprinkle it on the person's head. It was more like going back to the old days of how they would impose the ashes. Now, the ashes for Ash Wednesday are made from last year's palms. And I have a few old palms here. Remember how we put things in crosses and things like that? Well, we would burn these, and then these became the ashes for Ash Wednesday. Now, there's a change that happened in the words that were used. I still personally prefer going back to the old, re the wonder, you are man, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But the other one is repent and believe in the gospel. Both are good. But I like this sense of this mourning, this sense of knowing I am a sinner, and even though they don't sprinkle ashes on my head, it's still saying the same thing. And when I walk out of church carrying that cross upon my forehead, that to me that's a sign of who I am, and that I'm a repentant sinner. And of course, that's the real meaning of all of this, that Lent is the time for us to look into our hearts and to get rid of all the stuff that shouldn't be there. And so I've often said to people, have a happy Lent, because the Lent will bring you closer to Jesus.